Good morning. My name is Tom. I'm from the Central Coast Astronomical Society. I'd like to um, talk to you today about use of binoculars in astronomy. Um, got a couple of examples here to go through and, and demonstrate. Uh, but if you're trying to get a pair of binoculars for any purpose, um, I suggest that you look at our particular uh, website, which is centralcoastastronomy.org. There's several very nice uh, videos on uh, various designs on tele uh, binoculars, um, the various features such as uh, magnification, eye relief, uh, various kinds of coatings, um, field of view, and things like that. I'm not going to go into that in detail uh, today. But if you're getting a pair of binoculars for whatever reason, whether you're uh, going hiking, doing bird watching, um, or for astronomy, uh, you should check those out. So let's take a look at some examples here. First example here is an example um, of a pair of binoculars put out by Nikon. It's called uh, the Monarch. It is what is uh, designated as a roof prism design. It's kind of like uh, two little telescopes side by side um, and the, uh, the light goes straight through all the way through. Um, these are very light, they're very compact um, and they're waterproof and that's be very important in, um, in some instances uh, depending on their use. Um, there are a couple of numbers on every pair of binoculars that uh, that you buy, they're very important. Um, and the ones that we have here uh, are they're written on various places on the binoculars. This was written right on the top of the focusing knob. It's 8x36, and you read that as 8 by 36. The 8 stands for the magnification of um, of the particular group. All right, let's 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 say that um, I'm standing here and I'm looking out at a distance at an object uh, with my naked eye. Uh, your eyes are uh, magnification one, first power, okay? And so that means a magnification of eight here uh, would be eight times closer and of course a lot larger. Now, magnification uh, in binoculars uh, run the gamut from, oh, let's say seven up to about 20, but you can have them on either side, special instances where the magnification can be uh, larger um, or smaller. All right, now the 36. The 36 in the eight by 36 stands for the diameter of the objective lens, which is the, the front lens here, okay, in millimeters. So that happens to be about an inch and a half. Okay, so if you wanted to get out and use these for hiking, uh, traveling, I take these traveling with me uh, all the time. Um, they're very good for uh, sporting events, um, even going to the theater if you're way up in the loges. Um, for birding, it's very good because they're waterproof. You could be out uh, on kind of a foggy morning, maybe it's a little misty or even, you know, a slight rain. Doesn't matter, these things are waterproof and they're, um, they're very good uh, for that particular purpose. But for astronomy, astronomy, remember it's dark out there and what you're going to see things that are very, very dim, star clusters, galaxies and the things like that. So you actually should have a very a larger opening uh, on your on your objective, something that's going to suck in more photons, so you can see things that are a lot dimmer. So let's take a look at the next pair. Always try to remember to put the lens cap back on um, to protect the lenses. This is a pair of Orion Ultraview 
and it's a little different design. It's called a poro prism design. It's kind of have kind of a zigzag uh, orientation here, uh, where the uh, eyepieces are closer together uh, than the particular uh, objectives. I'd say if you were going to get a pair of binoculars for general purpose, I'd say this particular pair would work very, very well. As far as the numbers go, it's a 10 by 50. So instead of a magnitude, uh, a magnification of 8 that we saw with the Nikon, this is magnification of 10. And the objectives are 50, much, much larger uh, than, than the 36. So remember, if you're out there, if you wanted to use these for astronomy, I'd say this is a very, very good example. Number one, they're still fairly light and they're fairly easy to hold when you're looking out. Of course, take the lens cap off, but you're, uh, for hand holding them, um, 10 power is probably about as high as you'd want to go for a handheld pair of binoculars um, because after that, there's a little bit of shaking involved. Uh, and if you're going to be out there for two or three hours at night, it's going to be um, kind of hard to be looking out this way or especially like overhead. Um, so I wouldn't go into anything uh, higher than 10 power if you were going to, um, um, if you're going to handhold them. What are these good for? Well, there's probably no better way of looking at star clusters such as the Pleiades or the double cluster in Perseus than a good pair of binoculars. And um, because you have a little wider uh, field of view. Um, brighter uh, galaxies like the Andromeda, you can see the dust lanes in that. And of course the magnificent um, emission nebula in Orion uh, is very, very good with this. But by far my favorite is the Milky Way. Because you can start out looking at the spout of stars coming out of uh, the teapot in Sagittarius and then follow it all the way across the sky up and into, uh, into Cygnus. And uh, these are really good for that. Of course, the moon, absolutely wonderful in the moon. And, and you can even see um, the moons of Jupiter. You can see uh, if they're a little small, but you can make out the Galilean moons of, of Jupiter. Okay, so that's the 10 by 50s. What if you want to go to a little higher power? Well, we have these guys, and these are 20 by 85. These are made by a Stellar View. Um, they get a lot more glass in them. The, uh, the objective here is 85 rather than 50. So it's in a lot more light. And the magnification of, of 20, you can have a hard time holding these up by, by hand, but with a magnification of 20, you're going to find that whatever you're trying to focus on is not going to stay in the field. So if you want to have a binocular of, of this uh, design, um, you really need um, a good support, like a good solid tripod. You can see there's even a pier on, on the middle of this, um, of this bar here that uh, you would mount on a good sturdy tripod to uh, see things effectively and keep them in the field of view. Okay. All right, back to the, the 10 by 50s. I said this is probably a very good first uh, pair for astronomy, but you know, you're going to be out there maybe two or three hours. It's going to get kind of tired after a while. You're going to get tired. Um, and maybe you, if you lean against the car, you can see. Uh, you can see things, but you're still going to be kind of tired after a while holding these things. So I've got an option for you now. I've got another kind of device uh, that we can use in order with our 10 by 50s, and uh, I think you're going to like it.